the first strategy that the Bible gives the believer is to be strong in the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6, please, verse 10. Be strong in the Lord. It says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Please, can you give us Amplified? Is it possible to get Amplified of this rendition? Amplified gives a very beautiful rendition of this verse. It says, in conclusion, let me read for you. Be strong in the Lord. It says, be empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him that strength, from him that strength which his boundless might provides. Draw your strength. Be empowered through the consciousness of your union with him. The first survival strategy that the Bible gives us at times as this is to be strong in the Lord. And Daniel chapter 11 from verse 32 now gives us further clarity on the basis of our strength in this kingdom. Daniel 11 and verse 32 that if you want to be strong he says but the people that do know their God they shall be strong and shall do exploits so Daniel connects to the revelation of Paul by letting us know that if you desire strength and stamina and capacity it is derived from your knowledge of God is someone learning now you are strong in the Lord to the degree to which you are rooted in the knowledge of him. Most people do not know God. The ignorance of who God is, the boundless might that he has will keep you in fear and defeat. You may never be able to draw strength, especially at times like this. All you need to do is to go on social media or put on your television or radio or whatever and one news after the other one kidnap one bomb blast one threat and all of those kinds of things and when you are consumed by those information and you do not know god chances are excellent that you will not have any strength in you again are we together prophesy to yourself say be strong so we draw our strength in this kingdom from our knowledge our knowledge. Paul said, but I, I mean, that was Peter now. But I know whom I have believed, he says. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. There is something about God when you know. When you know God and you understand his character, fear dies permanently from your life. Hear what I'm telling you now. Look up, please. The Bible lets us know that the prophet, prophet Elisha, that he sat down and all kinds of people came, the army, they came and surrounded him and he was, he was sitting in confidence and his servant was so fearful, there was something the prophet knew that was the basis of his confidence. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, what, I, I cannot fear what man would do to me. Many believers do not know God. And so when perilous times come, we scrounge around and we begin to act and, and manifest antichrist qualities. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, I believe it is, Apostle Peter was encouraging us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grow in grace. And the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, John 17, John 17, give it to us verse 3. Jesus was praying and he said, This is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. Please get my teaching, knowing God. We may not have the time to go into it, but I've done a teaching, knowing God. You can go to our our platforms i think it should be on our youtube channel also knowing god i teach there that there are four biblical provisions to know god number one is scripture the first way we are given the allowance to know god is through the study of scripture 
and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation are we together you must know god paul even at the end of his life at the height of his apostolic ministry and his achievement he said that i may know him believers must contend for the knowledge of god an experiential knowledge of god not just a theoretical knowledge not that we just sing and then when times come because let me tell you this if you are alive in these days that we are living in your faith will be tested once and again your stamina will come from your persuasion as to who you know god to be are we together number one scripture i taught here in that teaching that the first way we know god is scripture what does the scripture reveal that jesus said ye err not knowing the scriptures he says for the scriptures testify of me so you can use the scripture to know god what about god do you know from scripture number one his character when you study scripture you learn the character of god number two when you study scripture you learn his modus operandi the way god behaves his character and his methodologies so if you do not submit yourself to the study of scripture and unfortunately i i admit to you that our generation is gradually becoming lazy as far as our passion for the word is concerned we pray and there are many people who pray but the value of your prayer is derived from the understanding of scripture if you are not sound in scripture your prayer will largely be shadow boxing is the reason why there is tremendous dissipation of spiritual energy but little result because a man can pray amiss even if with passion are we together this is very important so number one we know god through scripture number two the second biblical pathway to the knowledge of God is by studying his names. The names of God are a capture, a revelation of the multifaceted dimensions of him. All of the names of God as revealed in scripture, they are hosts of a revelation about God. Who shall I tell Pharaoh had sent me? He said, I am that I am. Every time they encountered God in a spectacular way, they named that place, they built a monument around that experience and captured that experience in a name. So that every time they wanted to see that dimension again, they would invoke that name. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Number three, how do we know God as revealed from the Bible? The third way we know God is through the study of Jesus. Jesus himself the Bible calls him the express image of the invisible God. Hebrews chapter 1, when you read verse 3, verse 1 says, God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us through the prophets. He said, as in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he had appointed to be heir of all things. By whom also he made the walls. Verse 3. He says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. So Jesus Christ is God incarnate. John chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, he says, was the word and the word was with God. And he says the word was God. Verse 2 says the same was in the beginning with God. So when you study Jesus, you learn God by observing Jesus. I've taught you, many of you who have paid attention to these teachings, um, I taught you that Jesus came for many reasons. He did not just come to die alone. There were many other things he came to achieve. One of the principal ministries of Jesus when he walked upon the earth was he came as a marking script to correct our understanding about God. Because until Jesus came, there was no accurate knowledge of God by any man. The prophet saw in times and shadows. And there was a mix of many things. Judaism and all of this. 
there were many things they, they credited to God that God had no hand in it. Are we together? When you read the Old Testament from the lens of the prophets, you will come up with a plethora of confusions because it, it misrepresents God on many grounds. And so Jesus came as a correction. So everything the Bible tells you in the Old Testament that God was, we study Jesus as a verification system. If the Bible says God is love, we have a right to probe God until we see love captured in Jesus. So everything we did not see captured in the ministry of Jesus, we are safe to assume that it's not consistent with the character of God, even if revealed by the prophets. Are you learning now? So more than just dying for your sin. The Bible calls him the author and the finisher of our faith. The word finisher there is perfecter of our faith, not just ending it. He begins it and perfects it. There are many things we have been told about God that are wrong. And if you do not learn your knowledge of God from Jesus, you see, it will affect your relationship with God because you will not be able to relate with God being that you do not know certain things about God. For instance, the Bible tells us that God is love. That is a powerful revelation. It should guard your heart as you deal with God. He is not just some angry person waiting with passion to vent vengeance on you. No. If that is your mindset about God, someone deceive you. You have to study God and study Jesus. Are we together? Yes. If you ever receive the comfort that God finds joy in your failure and mediocrity, then we look at Jesus. Did he ever see anybody who was in a condition that was not ideal and left that person? And if he did leave that person, what was the basis of leaving the person? There were people who were not healed in the Bible, for instance. And the Bible credits they are not being healed. Not to the unwillingness of Jesus to heal them, but to the, their unbelief. The Bible says Jesus even marveled. Many times in scripture, the Bible will say they brought him the oppressed, he healed them all. When he saw the blind, he healed them. That means this knowledge of God will sponsor your dealings with God. That every time you pray, you know that at the back end of your prayer is a passionate father willing to answer as revealed by Jesus. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He stopped. So if I call upon God, I expect an answer because Jesus came as a revelation of God. Are we together now? Many of us have come from, respectfully speaking, different denominations and different Christian circles and most of our models as far as painting the picture of God is concerned even by well-meaning people have been corrupted and aberrated and there is something about our understanding of God that needs adjustment so we look to Jesus we learn God as we study Jesus literally reading the gospels from Matthew, Mark, Luke and John exposing Jesus. The Bible does not hide anything about Jesus. It exposes his personal life. It exposes his relationship life. It exposes his ministerial life. It exposes his understanding of family. So every, whenever you are looking for God's perspective on any matter, study the earth work of Jesus. How did he approach those matters? This is how we know God. And then the last key that I gave in that teaching as to how we know God is experience. Experience. Experience is very powerful. It can teach us some things about God. You want to stand in these days, you must know God. There are many preachers who do not know God. Can I tell you this? Men and women of God, the confidence from whence we'll be able to teach God's people will be derived from our personal experience with God. It will be difficult for you to advocate certain dimensions of God if it is not a revelation to you. For instance, it is a risk to shout and say God can heal when you have not pressed into that dimension because there will always be a need for a demonstration of that which you believe. 
Does God deliver people from calamity? Oh, read your Bible. Read your Bible. Time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. Men who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shut the mouth of lions. It's in your Bible. So I know and I am safe to believe, not assume, that God can deliver. The psalmist said, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy of praise. So shall I be saved from my enemies. God is able to deliver. I need not be afraid. What can man do to me? Now, let me tell you the truth, believers. If you do not believe this, anything will kill you. Anything will sweep you off your feet. You will need to know that God is not only a savior, he can be a shield and a defense. That's what the Bible says. It says the name of the Lord, his names, his various offices are a strong tower. You can enter into any of the name as a revelation and you are secured. Let me tell you the evil that is physical that you see is by far less than the spiritual evils around you. When you hear that maybe there are terrorists or whatever, that is enough to bring fear. But whether or not you hear anything, the evils that happen per 24 hour is enough to sweep and destroy you. You see the way people die around like chickens. Somebody just gets off headache, headache, and he dies. The psalmist gave us a revelation already. He says, thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. Have you seen them? But they fly every day, including now as I'm talking. The noisome pestilence, the destruction that wasted in noonday. The first spiritual strategy for surviving perilous times is that you must know God. You must know God. There are things I know about God and I trust Him. Ah. You see, let me tell you, when you have not had an experience where your knowledge of God now defends you, your confidence may not be strong. Are we together now? Yes. It takes the knowledge of God to do the things that we do. It takes the knowledge of God to go the places that we go. What do you know about God? What do you know about God with respect to his power to save? What do you know about God with respect to his power to preserve? What do you know about God with respect to his power to redeem? What do you know about God with respect to his mercy, with respect to his grace? What do you know about God with respect to his judgment? Listen, these days are not the days for playing games with your spiritual life. You must obtain grace to settle down and become a student of scripture and learn. It was the psalmist that said, the Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. He was not taught. It was something he found. There was something Jacob did not know about God that made him abort a powerful experience that would have changed his life as a result of not having that experience he paid the price for 20 years in the house of laban the next time god will come he had learned through pain something about god that if your name and what is on your head is not changed you can suffer and be under duress and he held him he said i will not let you go he was not holding his hands he was holding his integrity god i know you Leave me for the day breaketh. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. Hear how God blesses. What is your name? I am Jacob. Thou shalt no more be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have had power with God and prevailed. He touched the whole of his thigh and blessed him. The Bible says he called the name of the place Peniel. And the sun arose for him. I have seen God face to face and my life is preserved. Please take the time to know God. The journey that you are about to embark on for the remaining days that we have to spend on this earth is a journey that will thrive on personal revelation. Thank God for the ministry of the fivefold. 
but as they dish you that word you have to transfer that theoretical knowledge that does not stand the test of time you need to walk as a believer who is confident in the fact that he knows God he said let not the wise man glory in his wisdom is that true let not the strong man glory in his strength let not the rich man glory in his riches but he said let him that glory and glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me when you know about God and someone brings a negative prophecy for you and says my brother I had a dream you are dead tomorrow the person may not be wrong but there is something you know about God. It gives you security. When Isaiah the prophet came and spoke over Hezekiah. Put your house in order. You will die. He said prophet I respect you. Go. Leave me and God. I know what to tell him. He turned his face to the wall and said remember. Is there no book of remembrance he was saying. Remember how I've worked diligently. And God changed that prophecy. If you don't know God, people will use the prophetic to cheat you. Especially in the days we are living in. There are people who became defeated because of something they heard. Someone will look at you and tell you, oh, Zaria, unfortunately, there is nothing. Your life is, you are just miserable. Your life is over. No school, no work, no money, no nothing, no favor. And you believe that because there is something about God you do not know. Where is the God that made light in Goshen when there was darkness in Egypt? You see, the people that do know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits. Is someone learning? 